Okay, so this is for homework, uh, math homework, um, Monday, October 23rd, uh, we're learning about fractions, All right, so I'm a little bit tired, but I think I can get through this, alright, number one, which of the following lists four decimal numbers between 0, 0 0.40 and 0 0.50? So the best way to look at this is just look at this. I mean, obviously this is, don't forget the decimal point. This is very important. But for the sake of this exercise, to find the answers, we're trying to simplify. What is this? All right, so we're trying to simplify. So we're just kind of, we're just thinking of it as 40 and 50. What's between 40 and 50, right? And remember the decimal point is very important. So now we look at the answers. Now, remember, we're looking between 4.40 and 0 0.50, right? Now, look at this one right here. Look at A. 0 0.42, 0 0.49, 0 0.41, and 0.44. That is, that is our answer right there. It's easy peasy. Now, we're just going to go through the other one just to be sure, okay? Remember, we're looking between 0 0.40 and 0 0.50. B says... 0 0.50, yes, yeah. 0.48, yes. 0.51, no, that's that's beyond 0.50. That's, that's after 4, 5 point, 0.50. We're looking for between these two, so that's not it. Okay, we'll go quickly go through this. 0 0.41, 0 0.44, 0 0.51. Well, that's not that's not between 0 0.40 and 0 0.50. So this is wrong. And I'm gonna get D. 0.39. That's the that's, that's already wrong because that's before 0.4. That's over here. We're looking for what's over, what's between this and this and this number 0.39 is right here. So it's beyond that. So this is again this confirms our, our answer for number one as being a. So that's easy peasy and that's the end of that. All right, this is for number two and three. It says use the number line to answer questions two and three. So this is the information they're giving us right here. I'm gonna read it out loud. Grandma gives a fraction of a batch of cookies to her grandchildren based on their ages. As you can see, Liv is right here. Joe is right over here. So Liv is a little bit after point 0.1. Joe is a little bit after point 0.2. May is a little bit before point 0.3. And Tim is, is right at point 0.4. So now let's look at the answers. The questions are rather. Which of these statements is not true? So we're looking for what is not true. Okay, so F says... Liv receives about 1.19 of the cookies. So, from 0 .1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 is here. 0 0.19 would be somewhere over here, right? Somewhere in this area right here. So that that automatically tells us this is not true. F is not true because if we were to estimate 0.1, I mean Liv's amount would be 0 0.11 maybe. We're close to that. It's certainly not 0 0.19. 0 .1, 0 0.19 is somewhere over here. So that's our answer right there. Now we're gonna to go to the other question, just to the other answer, just to make sure we're okay on what we got. Joe receives between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. So Joe's right here. It's saying that Joe receives between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. That is true. So this is we're looking for the answer that is not true. This is true. Joe does receive between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. Right? May receives more. Let's look at H. May receives more than Liv and May's right here. May receives more than Liv and Joe. She's over here. She receives more than Liv and Joe, which is true, but less than Tim. That's true. She's in between these two and Tim, so that is true. So that is not our answer. This is not our answer. This is not our answer. And then it says Tim receives the greatest amount of cookies. Tim's over here. He receives. The, yeah, that is true. He does receive the most, the greatest amount. So that's not true either. So now that's why this confirms that this is our answer. F. All right. Going on to number three, which is part of this question right here, this Liv, Joe, May, Tim question we had earlier. Which best describes the batch, the parts of the batch the children receive? So it's going in chronological order, which means it's basically going from smallest to greatest. All right. So we're gonna go. We're just Liv is about is about. If I had to guess, if we had to guess, it would be about point one one. That's true, right? This is 0.11. The next number that A gives us is 0.18. Well, that's not true. Joe is 
point two something, right? Point point two is like maybe two point two two or something, something, something to that effect. So that's not right. We already know that's not right. So A is incorrect. There's like a B. Point one five. Well, again, we're like we know that point. Uh, the first number is point one one, close to point one one. So that automatically takes this one out because you see it starts at point one five. So let's see, make sure you can see that. And the first number is 0.11. It's close to 0.11. This B is 0.15. That's in the middle. That's in the middle somewhere. Lib is not in the middle. She's over here on the far, on the closer to 0.1. So that automatically crosses this one. We know that's not the answer. And we can automatically cross a D. We know that's not the answer either because it starts with 0.16. That leaves us with C. All right? 0.11. Yeah, it's pretty close. Joe, where are we getting this? 0.21 or 0.22, something to that effect. Uh oh, we're there, 0.22. Next number, Jamey is probably 0.29 because it's less than 0.3, but, but almost almost 0.3, but not quite. So it's maybe 0.29. That's what we got, 0.29. And Tim is point is right on the number of 0.4, so he's 0.40. That's what we got. So that that confirms that this is our answer here. Let's see, easy peasy. And moving. Darwin, okay, now I'm on to number four. Darwin measured the length of a new pencil. After using the pencil for one week, he measured it again. The centimeter rule ruler shows Darwin's pencil. So you can see it's one, two, this is a centimeter. So one, two, three, four centimeters, four centimeters, and then point something, right? Now we can figure this out by looking at the number of ways this is divided or from four to five is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is tenths, right? And tenths is the first digit after the decimal point. So this is gonna be there here. It's gonna be four point something, right? And if we look at this right here, see the pencil mark goes through here. Well, this is tenths, not hundreds. If it was hundreds it would be in this in this digit this this area here. As an example, so it would be four point zero something, right? Like four point zero six, something to that effect, right? But we're not looking at hundreds; we're looking at tenths. So that's this number here, the first digit after the decimal point. So we count them: one, two, three. So four point three is, I think, what are the answer we're looking for, right? So that's that's how long this pencil is, because it's thir This is three tenths, right? Four point. Then this 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 represents. That, that this is this divided into 10 pieces. All right, we already counted the 10 pieces. Now one, two, three, this is the third piece. So that is how long the pencil is. Oops. So now we look at the answer, question rather. Uh-oh, this is what we just said. How long is Darwin's pencil now? How long is this pencil we just measured? We said it was 4.3, right? That's what, we, that's what we're thinking. Well, now we look at the answer, 4.1, no, negative. 4.6, nope. Let's look at J for a second before we go to the H. 4.03, this is what I was saying. So if this was divided into hundredths from four to five, this is divided into hundredths, then we could, and it was on the third hundredth, then we could say that that is the answer. But we know that's not the answer. We already said we're working with tenths. This is the tenth, tenth with a TH at the end. Tenth, every tenth digit, this is the hundredth digit. We're not looking for hundredths, so this is definitely wrong. So that's what we know this is the answer, 4.3. Because we're working with tenths. This is the first digit after the decimal point represents tenths. So this is our answer. H. Easy peasy. Now on. All right, now we're done. On to number five. Reed counts the pennies in his pocket. He says he has more than 60 cents but less than 70 cents. Which point, which point or points represent the part of a dollar Reed could have in his pocket? So let's look at this line really quick. So this is. This this is the this is this is to extend all the way out to to one hundred point one or one point zero, that would be a dollar. So this is how we're, this is this is representing the tenths of a, of a dollar, right? Point five tenths of a dollar, which is this is the equivalent of fifty cents. Now I'm just giving you this line just to just to, just, so you just you can understand this line. Point. So we're looking for anything between. The question is, remember he says Reed has between this. And this point between point six of a dollar, point seven cents, point seventh of a dollar, so, right? So this is sixty cents. This is the equivalent of sixty cents to seventy cents. We're looking for these two points. 
So you see that there's between this and this, there's two points B. And so this might sound a little confusing, but we're going to review it here in a second again, all right? So just make it a little more clear. So this is, and the question is, which point or points represents the part of the dollar read could have? It could be this, it could be B or C. And that's, that's exactly what it's asking us. So, so is this point A? Point A is between point 0.5 and point 0.6. That does that. That is not what we're looking for. Let's look at C. Points B, C, and D. B, C, and D is after point 0.7. So that's not, no, that's not what we're looking for either. Not the answer. So point A is not the answer. And then D is none, none of the above. That's not the answer. Because we know it's B and C. And that's this one right here. B and C. That's our answer. Now I'm going to re review this again really quickly. Just to make sure you understand. Okay, so this is a lot of information. All right, I'm trying to go a little more slowly this time. So I'm going to read the question again. Reed counts the pennies in his pocket. He says he has more than 60 cents but less than 70 cents. Which point or points represent the parts of a dollar Reed could have in his pocket? So again, this is this whole line over here represents a whole, if we were to extend all the way over here, this represents a whole dollar. So this is 0.5 of a dollar, 0.6 of a dollar, 0.7 of a dollar, 0.8 of a dollar. And this is 8 tenths, so, or 7 tenths, 6 tenths, so on. This represents the parts of a dollar. So this is, this is the equivalent of 50 cents. This is the equivalent of 60 cents, 70 cents, and so on, 70 cents, and 80 cents. Because 80, 80 parts of, of 100 is 80 cents of a dollar, right? So we're not concerned, we're not, we're looking for the answer that says between point, between 60 cents and 70 cents. So what are we not concerned with? We don't care about this, but between here and here, because that's not what the question is asking. We don't care about that. We don't care about this because it's between this is this is this is the only section we're in, we're we're concerned with. From point sixty to point seventy, all right? That's all we care about. So it's asking which points or points represent the parts of a dollar we could have in his pocket. So it's between this and this, and there's only two points between that. It's B and C. So that's our answer right there. That's what we we can immediately say. Well, it's this one right here. We we don't have to look at the other ones. We already know this is the answer. And again, that is, this is a little confusing, but this is. Not as confusing as you might think it is. Uh, just think of it in terms of a dollar. So this is for the, for the parts of a dollar. So 0.5 of a dollar, 0.6 of a dollar, 0.7 of a dollar, 0 0 0.9 will be over here. Some will be over here on this side. And 0.4 will be back this way. But again, we're only interested in what's between here and here. This, these two parts. All right, so that was a little confusing, but hopefully, hopefully you got to understand it. If you have any questions, uh, look over the video again. All right, thanks, guys.